everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Walter and I'm going to give you a quick tour to this product. So Unium's core functionality, it, uh, we, we have divided it in what we call four pillars. Uh, so the first pillar is the subscription management pillar. That's where all your commercial relations are stored, like, you know, customers, resellers. And it's also where your product proposition slash price book is stored. And of course, where those two come together on the actual subscription itself, where you have maybe given some discounts or different billing frequencies agreed or things like that. Um, once you have established a proper subscription, our billing engine will simply know who to invoice for which product, for what amounts, uh, and we'll just do that. Um, you can do that either via Unium in our accounts receivable module, or we make sure that all the data, the relevant data is synchronized to your finance system and it's invoiced from there. Last but not least, we have metrics and dashboards, uh, and today we'll also show you a bunch of these. So without further ado, jumping straight into the product, this is Unium. You see your demo company. This is where you have your legal entities. So for instance, you know, you have your holding where all revenue is consolidated and maybe, you know, you have a, a separate uh, uh, Swedish entity, separate Dutch entity, German entity, and so on. And uh, each has, you know, it's invoicing entities, not just sales offices. Uh, here you can see notifications. So I, I know when somebody has closed a deal or somebody did something in the system, uh, this is where we tell you uh, what we have released and new features. And then I'm jumping all the way to the left to insights. Um, this is custom per each individual using Unium, but I have set it up with bookings, subscriptions, and financials. That makes most sense to me. Uh, Long-term CMR means, you know, what is the consolidated uh, new business value in MR that I have uh, contracted in uh, February in this case. So that's 8,250 euros. Yay. Uh, I did 1,200 euros of upsell, which is also very good. Unfortunately, also had 3,000 euros of CMR in churn and 750 in partial churn, like partial cancellations of contracts. Uh, if I want to have a closer look, I can see you know, the detailed mutations over time with a starting and ending balance. Uh, I can see my customers, like how are my customers growing over time? My net retention by monthly cohorts, for instance, uh, my churn. So if I want to know a bit more, like what went wrong with these cases, why did they uh, choose to end things with us? Uh, any upcoming renewals that are either active that I need to do something with or that are just going to be automatically renewed by Unium if that was agreed with the customer. Uh, my recurring revenue, luckily with a subscription business, you can look a bit ahead. So that's really cool. Uh, MR um, analysis. So if I want to know more about the actual MR, like how is my MR per account, per product or per product category in certain countries and things like that, I can go into detail and slice the dice a bit there. Um, jumping into an order. So I'm going to create a subscription now. Uh, so I'm going to call this thanks for watching this video. And my customer name is also thanks for watching this video. You have here an invoice account and a normal account. Uh, sometimes you have resellers that receive the invoice or send the invoice to the end customer and we need to charge them some, uh, we need to give them some kickback. Or you maybe have a customer that, you know, is a customer in, in Amsterdam, but their head office is in US, for instance, and the invoice needs to go there. So that's the account hierarchy right there. The effective start date of the subscription left to the 1st of September is going to run for 12 months. After that, it's going to be renew renewed with 12 months and they have three months or let's give them one month notice period. And this makes sure that if, if nothing happens, the contract is going to be automatically renewed or it's not going to be automatically renewed and we need to renegotiate a new term. So I'm going to uh, add a SaaS product here to the order. And you have sometimes maybe bundles, right? You have separate bundles your customers can choose from. So let's choose the basic bundle right here. You see uh, the, when choosing the basic, it comes with two charges, a recurring charge for a number of users and a setup fee, which is a 3000 euro flat fee. Now we can give this 10% discount and we give the recurring users. It's actually a tiered based pricing model. So per default, they, play a, uh, they pay a flat fee of 1500 euros just for using the platform. With that come 20 users. And if they want to go above that, they pay, for instance, five euros per users in this tier. So let's do 50 users in this case, or no, no, let's let's do 20, 25. That's that's easier for what I'm going to do after this. Um, so I can activate this order, uh, or I can say, like, if they want to give them one month free of charge, I can say, okay, they're users. I'm going to start them on a specific date. So for instance, the 1st of October, or I'm going to link it to the milestone. So they only start paying for the users when they're, for instance, onboarded with the software. So that's also a kind of cool option, I would say. If I then activate this, uh, 
I can also start invoicing this, this because we like cash and this dear new customer loves receiving an invoice the same second we close the deal, right? So I'm going to just invoice this uh, right away. Um, and now what I can see here is I can preview this and then I can see, you know, this is the number of users. So 25 times five euros and the basic setup fees in, included there. Thanks for watching this video uh, because we mean that. And then if I post this, it is now sent to the customer based on how the customer told us I want to receive, uh, I want to pay via direct debit, credit card, or I want to receive an e-invoice via Apple, or I want to receive an email with PDF. What is also cool is you can click on the uh, financial details so you can see how is the revenue recognition going to be sent out for this uh, product. You can set this up per product, per contract, whatever you want. Here you can see the, the total amounts divided by 12 and spread over um, over the full year. So when I close the month of September, 1,525 euros is going to be moved from my deferred to my re re recognized revenue. So that's really cool. I think what we all know in SaaS, what happens a lot is that you know, contracts change, users are upgraded, downgraded, and things like that. So let's do uh, one more thing like this. So let's say they started on the 1st of September, they called you uh, on the 15th of October that they wanted to have, uh, instead of 25, they want to have now 50 users because they grew. So we're very happy for them. And we're going to upgrade their contract right here. Uh, and then I can also send them an invoice uh, for this. Yes. So now I have uh, changed the order, which is quite cool. Uh, and then I can invoice them for the added amount. And what has now happened to this order as well is that it's now received a new version. So you can see here that I have a new version of the order. So I can also check how did the first version look. So we have an audit trail, which is important for auditors. And I can also keep track of my bookings, like how is everything going uh, with my actual customers. Um, up and downgrading users, I just did the manual version of that. Uh, you can, of course, link your own SaaS platform to Unium to make sure that we have a live inflow of the actual amount of users so that just proratedly is corrected during their uh, lifetime with you. So that's, that's really cool. Um, I'm going to conclude this uh, by showing you that Everything I just did with creating an order is not necessarily necessary. <laughs> so uh, if you have, for instance, Salesforce, HubSpot, or Microsoft Dynamics, we actually aim to take all the information sales already did uh, in their sales, in their deal stage, like they collect the customer address information, maybe a VAT code and things like that. We send all that to Union when the deal is won in the CRM system, and we convert that into what we call a draft subscription. And uh, the draft subscription is then reviewed by finance. They check is everything okay. Sales is of course perfect in administration, but you know, human errors. So they check and approve it. And once they approve it, it's actually one of those active subscriptions we just did manually. Uh, when that's running in Unium, the SaaS service can keep track of, as an example, the uh, actual users in the platform. And when it's ready to invoice, it can do that. For instance, in the US, when you have a legal entity there, you need to keep track of 14,000 tax jurisdictions. It can do that, for instance, with TaxJar that it applies to write sales tax on the invoice. You can choose to send this via Visma uh, to, uh, you know, for e-invoicing. Um, or you send an email with PDF via Unium. You can connect your bank via our IA PSD2 certified banking gateway. Uh, or for instance, if you have a payment service provider like Stripe that handles your credit cards and direct debit payments, you can send the payments via there. Um, if you choose to run a accounts receivable in the finance system, you can use all our connectors there. So we have a whole lot of connectors, which we'll not go through today. Uh, just go to our website and check the connectors and APIs and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, I hope I picked your interest with this video. I really thank you for hanging on with me for nine minutes. Wow, I speak for a long time. I hope you liked it and let us know if we can help any further. Thank you. Bye-bye.